penance is repentance of sins as well as the proper name of the Roman Catholic, Orthodox Christian, and Anglican sacrament of penance and reconciliation, confession. It also plays a part in non-sacramental confession among Lutherans and other Protestants. The word penance derives from Old French and Latin parenitentia, both of which derive from the same root meaning repentance, the desire to be forgiven. Penance and repentance, similar in the derivation and original sense, have come to symbolize conflicting views of the essence of repentance, arising from the controversy as to the respective merits of faith and good works. Word derivations occur in many languages. Christianity. Penance as a religious attitude Protestant reformers, upholding the doctrine of justification by faith, held that repentance consisted in a change of the whole moral attitude of the mind and soul, and that the divine forgiveness preceded true repentance and confession to God without any reparation of works. Rather, God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. In his Of Justification by Faith, Calvin says, Without forgiveness no man is pleasing to God, nonetheless, in traditions formed by a Calvinist or Zwinglian sensibility there has traditionally been a stress on reconciliation as a precondition to fellowship. The attitude of penance or repentance can be externalized in acts that a believer imposes on himself or herself, acts that are themselves called penances. Penitential activity is particularly common during the season of Lent and Holy Week. In some cultural traditions, this week, which commemorates the Passion of Christ, may be marked by penances that include flagellantism or even voluntary pseudo-crucifixion. Advent is another season during which, to a lesser extent, penances are performed. Acts of self-discipline are used as tokens of repentance. Easier acts of self-discipline include devoting time to prayer or reading of the Bible or other spiritual books. Examples of harder acts of self-discipline are fasting, continence, abstaining from alcohol or tobacco, or other privations. Self-flagellation and the wearing of a cilicia more rarely used. Such acts have sometimes been called mortification of the flesh, a phrase inspired by Romans chapter 8 verse 13. If you live according to the flesh you will die, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Such acts are associated also with the sacrament. In early Christianity, public penance was imposed on penitents, the severity of which varied according to the seriousness of the offenses forgiven. Today the act of penance or satisfaction imposed in connection with the sacrament for the same therapeutic purpose can be set prayers or a certain number of prostrations or an act or omission intended to reinforce what is positive in the penitent's behavior or to inhibit what is negative. The act imposed is itself called a penance or epitemia. Penance is a sacrament Roman Catholicism in the Catholic Church. The sacrament of penance is one of the two sacraments of healing. Jesus Christ has willed that by this means the Church should continue, in the power of the Holy Spirit, his work of healing and salvation. Through the priest who is the minister of the sacrament and who acts not in his own name but on behalf of God. Confession of sins is made to God and absolution is received from God. Essential to the sacrament are acts both by the sinner and by the priest. Serious sins must be confessed within at most a year and always before receiving Holy Communion, while confession of venial sins also is recommended. The act of penance or satisfaction that the priest imposes helps the penitent to overcome selfishness, to desire more strongly to live a holy life, to be closer to Jesus, and to show to others the love and compassion of Jesus. It is part of the healing that the sacrament brings. Sin injures and weakens the sinner, himself, as well as his relations with God and neighbor. Absolution takes away sin, but it does not remedy all the disorders sin has caused. Raised up from sin, the sinner must still recover his full spiritual health by doing something more to make amends for the sin.
he must make satisfaction for, or, expiate, his sins, this is done by prayer, charity, or an act of Christian asceticism. The rite of the sacrament requires that, the kind and extent of the satisfaction should be suited to the personal condition of each penitent so that, each one may restore the order which he disturbed and through the corresponding remedy be cured of the sickness from which he suffered. The priest, is bound under the severest penalties to maintain the, seal of confession, absolute secrecy about any sins revealed to him in confession. Especially in the West, the penitent may may choose to confess in a specially constructed confessional, with a screen separating the priest from the penitent, whose anonymity is thus preserved completely. The penitent may also choose to confess face to face, and this is the tradition in some Eastern Catholic churches. Although spiritual direction is not necessarily connected with the sacrament, the sacrament of penance has throughout the centuries been one of its main settings, enabling the Christian to become sensitive to God's presence, deepen the personal relationship with Christ and attend to the action of the Spirit in one's life. In the Roman Rite, celebration of the sacrament begins with a greeting and blessing by the priest, who invites the penitent to have trust in God. The priest may read a short passage from the Bible that proclaims God's mercy and calls man to conversion, and then the penitent confesses his sins, helped if necessary by the priest, after which the priest gives him counsel for his life and proposes an act of penance, which the penitent accepts to make satisfaction for sin and to amend his life. The penitent declares sorrow for sin and the priest imparts absolution, saying, God the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the Church may God give you pardon and peace, and I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Finally, the priest invites the penitent to give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and dismisses him with some words the longest formula of which is, May the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and of all the saints, whatever good you do and suffering you endure, heal your sins, help you to grow in holiness, and reward you with eternal life. Eastern Orthodox Church In the Eastern Orthodox Church, penance is usually called sacred mystery of confession. In Orthodoxy, the intention of the sacramental mystery of holy confession is to provide reconciliation with God through means of healing. Similar to the Eastern Catholic Churches, in the Eastern Orthodox Church there are no confessionals. Traditionally the penitent stands or kneels before either the icon of Christ the teacher or in front of an icon of Christ, not made by hands. This is because in Orthodox sacramental theology, confession is not made to the priest, but to Christ, the priest being there as a witness, friend and advisor. On an analogy in front of the penitent has been placed a gospel book and a crucifix. The penitent venerates the gospel book and the cross and kneels. This is to show humility before the whole church and before Christ. Once they are ready to start, the priest says, Blessed is our God, always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages, reads the Trisagen prayers in the Psalm chapter 50. The priest then advises the penitent that Christ is invisibly present and that the penitent should not be embarrassed or be afraid, but should open up their heart and reveal their sins so that Christ may forgive them. The penitent then accuses himself of sins. The priest quietly and patiently listens, gently asking questions to encourage the penitent not to withhold any sins out of fear or shame. After the confessant reveals all their sins, the priest offers advice and counsel. Penances, known as epitemia, are given with a therapeutic intent, so they are opposite to the sin committed. Epitemia are neither a punishment nor merely a pious action, but are specifically aimed at healing the spiritual ailment that has been confessed. For example, if the penitent broke the Eighth Commandment by stealing something, the priest could prescribe they return what they stole and give alms to the poor on a more regular basis. Opposites are treated with opposites. If the penitent suffers from gluttony, the confessant's fasting rule is reviewed and perhaps increased. 
The intention of confession is never to punish, but to heal and purify. Confession is also seen as a second baptism, and is sometimes referred to as the baptism of tears. In orthodoxy, confession is seen as a means to procure better spiritual health and purity. Confession does not involve merely stating the sinful things the person does. The good things a person does or is considering doing are also discussed. The approach is holistic, examining the full life of the confessant. The good works do not earn salvation, but are part of a psychotherapeutic treatment to preserve salvation and purity. Sin is treated as a spiritual illness, or wound, only cured through Jesus Christ. The orthodox belief is that in confession, the sinful wounds of the soul are to be exposed and treated in their open air, can be translated as air in motion, or wind. Once the penitent has accepted the therapeutic advice and counsel freely given to him or her by the priest then, placing his epitrachelion over the head of the confessant, the priest says the prayer of forgiveness over the penitent. In the prayer of forgiveness, the priest asks of God to forgive the sins committed. He then concludes by placing his hand on the head of the penitent and says, The grace of the All-Holy Spirit, through my insignificance has loosened and granted to you forgiveness. In summary, the priest reminds the penitent what he or she has received is a second baptism, through the mystery of confession, and that they should be careful not to defile this restored purity but to do good and to hear the voice of the psalmist, turn from evil and do good. But most of all, the priest urges the penitent to guard him or herself from sin and to commune as often as permitted. The priest dismisses the repentant one in peace. Anglicanism private confession of sins to a priest, followed by absolution, has always been provided for in the Book of Common Prayer. In the communion service of the 1662 English Prayer Book, for example, we read, And because it is requisite that no man should come to the Holy Communion, but with a full trust in God's mercy, and with a quiet conscience, therefore, if there be any of you, who by this means, that is, by personal confession of sins, cannot quiet his own conscience herein, but requireth further comfort or counsel, let him come to me, or to some other discreet and learned minister of God's word, and open his grief, that by the ministry of God's holy word he may receive the benefit of absolution, together with ghostly counsel and advice to the quieting of his conscience, and avoiding of all scruple and doubtfulness. The status of confession as a sacrament is stated in Anglican formularies, such as the 39 Articles. Article 25 includes it among those five commonly called sacraments which are not to be counted for sacraments of the gospel, for that they have not any visible sign or ceremony ordained of God. It is important to note, however, that commonly called sacraments does not mean wrongly called sacraments, and that the article merely distinguishes confession and the other rites. From the two great sacraments of the Gospel, until the prayer book revisions of the 1970s and the creation of alternative service books in various Anglican provinces, the penitential rite was always part of larger services. Prior to the revision, private confessions would be according to the form of ministry to the sick. The form of absolution provided in the order for the visitation of the sick reads, Our Lord Jesus Christ who hath left power to his church to absolve all sinners who truly repent and believe in him, of his greater mercy forgive thee thine offences, and by his authority committed to me, I absolve thee from all thy sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Despite the provision for private confession in every edition of the Book of Common Prayer, the practice was frequently contested during the ritualist controversies of the later 19th century. Methodism in the Methodist Church, as with the Anglican Communion, penance is defined by the Articles of Religion as one those commonly called sacraments but not to be counted for sacraments of the Gospel, also known as the Five Lesser Sacraments. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, held the validity of Anglican practice in his day is reflected in the 1662 Book of Common Prayer, stating that we grant confession to men to be in many cases of use. 
public, in case of public scandal, private, to a spiritual guide for disburdening of the conscience, and as a help to repentance, the Book of Worship of the United Methodist Church contains the right for private confession and absolution in a service of healing too, in which the minister pronounces the words, in the name of Jesus Christ. Since Methodism holds the office of the keys to belong to all baptized persons, private confession does not necessarily need to be made to a pastor, and therefore lay confession is permitted, although this is not the norm. Near the time of death, many Methodists confess their sins and receive absolution from an ordained minister, in addition to being anointed. In Methodism, the minister is bound by the seal of the confessional, with the Book of Discipline stating, All clergy of the United Methodist Church are charged to maintain all confidences inviolate including confessional confidences. Any confessor who divulges information revealed in confession is subject to being defrocked in accordance with canon law. As with Lutheranism, in the Methodist tradition, corporate confession is the most common practice, with the Methodist liturgy including prayers of confession, assurance and pardon. The traditional confession of the Sunday service, the first liturgical text used by Methodists, comes from the service of morning prayer in the Book of Common Prayer. The confession of one's sin is particularly important before receiving Holy Communion. The official United Methodist publication about the Eucharist, titled This Holy Mystery states that, we respond to the invitation to the table by immediately confessing our personal and corporate sin, trusting that, if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our expression of repentance is answered by the absolution in which forgiveness is proclaimed. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Many Methodists, like other Protestants, regularly practice confession of their sin to God himself, holding that, when we do confess, our fellowship with the Father is restored. He extends his parental forgiveness. He cleanses us of all unrighteousness, thus removing the consequences of the previously unconfessed sin. We are back on track to realize the best plan that he has for our lives. Lutheranism The Lutheran Church teaches two key parts in repentance. Lutherans reject the teaching that forgiveness is obtained through penance. Penance in Indian beliefs in some religions of Indian origin, acts of hardship committed on oneself, especially as part of an ascetic way of life in order to attain a higher form of mental awareness or favors from God are considered penance. In Hinduism penance is widely discussed in Dharmasastra literature. The Indian spiritual teacher Meho Baba stated that when penance is carefully nourished and practiced, it inevitably results in the mental revocation of undesirable modes of thought and conduct, and makes one amenable to a life of purity and service. Penance in art and fiction, films, penance, sadhna aka the penance, the bell of penance, a daughter of penance, proper penance, bibliography. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed., Encyclopedia Britannica, Cambridge University Press, The Sacrament of Penance and Reconciliation, from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, IMDb.